Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video on government intervention uh, related to externalities and market failure. In this short revision video, we're going to be looking at the economics of carbon taxation. So first of all, what is a carbon tax? Well, a carbon tax is a form, a type of government intervention, and it's designed to address one or more market failures. You may well have been studying the economics of externalities in particular, for example, pollution from factories, from transport and other industries where the market may fail to allocate resources optimally. While a carbon tax is an approach, a well-known approach to addressing these market failures. And under such a system, the government sets a price, a tax that emitters or polluters must pay for each measured ton of greenhouse gas emissions, CO2 emissions, that they emit into the atmosphere. I'm going to recommend to you in the comments section of this video a fantastic article written by Tim Harford, published in the Financial Times in October 2021, on the case for a carbon tax. It's a great read. It's well worth a look at. So what is the main aim of carbon pricing, which of course includes a carbon tax? Well, essentially, pricing, carbon pricing is, is a way of providing the signals for mobilising investment in clean technologies and getting businesses and consumers to change their behaviour. So we're trying to create signals and therefore incentives for individuals and, and firms to reduce carbon intensive energy use and over time shift towards cleaner fuels, including renewables, therefore cutting emissions and hoping to meet a country's official climate targets. And I, I, my, I suspect that economists pretty much overwhelmingly support pricing CO2 emissions. But how much to charge for each tonne of emissions is perhaps one of the most controversial and important aspects of any debate over carbon pricing. There's no real consensus among, amongst economists. I was pointed towards a recent paper in the scientific journal Nature that said actually you need a pretty high price per tonne of carbon, perhaps upwards of uh, above 100 euros per tonne, to really galvanise and change the signals and the incentives for a, a significant switch towards low carbon energy and uh, to decarbonise uh, the economy. So a, a quick explanation of how a carbon tax works in theory. First of all, key point, a carbon tax is designed to change the behaviour of consumers and firms by changing the relative price of the things that use, for example, lots of, of, of energy. A carbon tax puts a price on each tonne of carbon emissions, and this is based on something called the polluter pays principle. Uh, pollution taxes were first put forward by the economist Albert Pigou. They're sometimes called Piguvian taxes. And the idea is that the carbon tax helps to internalise the externality. And what that means is that the tax increases the marginal private cost for the polluter, hopefully closer towards the external costs that they're, they're creating. And as we'll see in a few minutes, that increase in private costs reduces output and therefore takes the economy closer to a social equilibrium. And a second key point from carbon tax is that a carbon tax generates tax revenues and they can often be used to finance other projects, including, for example, clean energy investments. Well, the theory uh, is pretty straightforward. You put a price on carbon uh, and uh, here are some examples of countries that do carbon, uh, put a price on carbon. The UK, it's about just under $100, uh, sorry, 100 euros per tonne. Uh, some of that is the carbon price in the carbon trading scheme. Most of that is things like fuel taxation. So the UK has not yet committed lock, stock and barrel to a, to a carbon tax across the board. In Germany, however, they do have legislation that came forward in uh, 2021 that set a price of €25 Euros per tonne. Then they have some other environmental taxes on top of that to take them to 78 uh, France has a carbon tax of €45 Euros per tonne and the Netherlands, 30 euros. So quite a few European countries in particular have carbon taxes um, allied to the price of carbon in the carbon trading market. I think Sweden is the country with the highest carbon taxes in the world. In 2021, uh, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, 
uh, proposed an international carbon price floor with different price points for emissions for economies at different stages of income, different stages of development. So they suggested, I think this is great context actually, that for high income countries like Germany, maybe Japan, the United, United Kingdom, the USA and so on, there should be a carbon price of 75 euros per tonne of CO2. For middle income countries like Mexico and China and uh, maybe Poland, 50 euros per tonne. And for those low income countries, perhaps Bangladesh or Vietnam or Malawi or Zambia, the figure should be 25 euros per tonne. So the IMF are arguing for, if you like, a, a, a graded uh, progressive system where the, the carbon tax would bear most heavily on, on high income rich countries. It's an interesting idea. So how does a carbon tax work in theory? Let's just work through the diagram which would allow you to make a really good analysis point on a carbon tax. Don't forget you can pause the video at any stage. I'll work through the diagram with you sequentially to show you how this works. So let's consider a chemical factory shown in the top right hand corner there which is emitting pollution which could conceivably be part of a carbon tax system. There's that private marginal cost, that's their supply curve. There's the marginal social cost suggesting that the production of cement generates emissions, pollution, air pollution, noise pollution and so on, such that the marginal social cost is above the private cost. So throwing a marginal benefit curve, I'm going to ignore externalities from consumption. So that's the private and social benefit curve. The equilibrium for the private sector only, the free market, is here. And I'll put Q1. That's where they only consider their own costs and benefits. But at that output, Q1, there is an external cost which we have to consider. The externality, the pollution and things. And obviously, there's a, an issue there about measuring these things accurately and also valuing these externalities. So social cost is above private cost. There is an external cost. And from society's point of view, the private optimum output Q1 is too high relative to the social equilibrium, which takes social cost into account. Let's call that output Q2. So here's what might be a familiar diagram showing a market failure over production. Q1 is greater than Q2. And the social optimum output is lower than the private optimum. And that triangle to the right of that point is the deadweight loss of social welfare. Well, a carbon tax in, aims to make the polluter pay. So what a carbon tax does is, it, is that it increases the marginal private cost of supply. I've shifted the marginal private cost curve up, drawn as a dotted line. So it's MPC plus the tax. Now, in theory, if you get the tax right, that takes output back to the social equilibrium output. And the market price for the carbon tax will be higher than it would be if you left the market decide. One of the other aspects of a carbon tax is you will get some tax revenue. That vertical distance is the tax per unit. If you multiply by the quantity Q2, then that gives you the carbon tax revenues. So there we go, there's a neat diagram showing the possible effects for a carbon tax. A great diagram to use if you get an analysis question as well as an evaluation question. So what are some of the main arguments in favour of a carbon tax? Well, let me pick out five for you. First of all, it's a, a key source of tax revenue. Indeed, in some countries, an environmental tax could yield billions of dollars and pounds and euros each year. And that money, the tax revenue, from polluting, uh, paying, uh, polluters paying, uh, could be earmarked for funding specific projects like clean energy investment or perhaps other socially beneficial projects. It might also be used to fund a tax cut. So you increase taxes on bad things like pollution and perhaps cut an employment tax to generate more jobs. You know, you take the same amount of tax in total, you're taxing a bad more and cutting a tax for good reasons equivalent on the other side. Critically, a carbon tax, if it's known in advance, the government says, for example, the carbon tax is going to be 100 euros per tonne of CO2, then that gives greater certainty to polluters, including our chemical factory, our energy plants, our factories, our, our airlines, for example, about what the price of carbon will be. We can contrast that with carbon trading, which we have a separate video on, where the, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, monthly price of carbon permits is much more volatile. 
Fundamentally, the case for a carbon tax is built around the polluter pays principle. That uh, market pollution is a market failure and that people should pay for some of the external costs they create. And crucially, I think if the, if the carbon tax is set at a sufficiently high level, it may well be a catalyst. It may well create the incentives for much needed clean energy investment, maybe some extra research and innovation to cut emissions. So in that sense, it can be growth enhancing. But what are some of the arguments against a carbon tax? Some of the counter arguments as we evaluate this point. Well, a carbon tax it will typically increase costs. The variable costs of businesses will go up. It'll cost more to fly planes. It'll cost more to make T-shirts. It'll cost more to transport goods and services, uh, goods in particular around the world. And higher variable costs might reduce business profits, which might then harm capital investment, potentially leading to fewer jobs, maybe reduced exports and slower growth. So there's always a kind of macroeconomic fear that imposing environmental taxes with the best of intentions could have some damaging macro consequences. It's often difficult to measure carbon emissions accurately. Yes, we can use filters and sensors and things and they get better with each year. But if you can't measure the emissions, it's pretty tough, pretty hard to set the right level for a carbon tax. And then there's the impact on the cost of living. A tax on carbon would be likely to increase food prices and energy prices, which uh, could well have a regressive effect on the, the living standards of millions of low-income families. And of course, if, if one country imposes a carbon tax, but it's not a sort of multilateral agreement, then it might encourage a shift of production towards other countries where perhaps there's either no carbon tax or a low one, or uh, there isn't the same drive to control emissions. So the production shifts from country A to country B. Global emissions don't change. They just happen to take place in another country. But of course, there might be some lost jobs as a result in the country that imposed the tax. And then there's the issue of how high does the tax need to be to really change behaviour. And this is where you can link in with your year 12 economics. If the demand for something is, has a low price elasticity of demand, it's going to take quite a big carbon tax to really make, make a difference. There could be some consumer resistance to a new carbon tax. If you're buying your beef or you're buying your protein food from a supermarket and you have the carbon tax uh, clearly labelled on the price there, would, uh, would people see that as a positive or a negative? Some economists argue that all the revenues from a carbon tax should be returned to taxpayers, either in the form of a lower tax on income or perhaps an annual grant. They argue that carbon tax should be neutral should be revenue neutral. And they believe that the main aim of a carbon tax is to increase the relative price of emissions rather than be a sort of generous cash cow revenue raiser for the government. So carbon tax is highly topical, very important, a key type of government intervention to be aware of ahead of your exams, something you have to know something about, I think. A growing number of countries around the world have introduced carbon taxes, whereas others have gone for a kind of carbon permit trading scheme as an alternative. And we have a separate updated video on carbon trading. Look out for that. But be prepared to analyse and evaluate both carbon trading and carbon taxes, as well as alternatives, including subsidy renewals, uh, subsidising renewals, renewables, things like regulation and, uh, and other interventions which could take a country towards a cleaner energy future. There we go. That has been a fairly whistle-stop tour through the economics of carbon taxes. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for joining in as always. Stay safe, stay curious, and see you again sometime soon.